Hello everyone. In this episode, Shamsi and I are talking about etiquette in the Afghan culture. So let's get started. My first question to you is, have you noticed any differences between the etiquette in Australia and the Afghan culture? Uh, yes, I have actually. In my Afghan culture, we treat guests to the highest standards. We welcome them to our homes. We cook the best food and beverages to the guest. We try to make them as comfortable as we can. So basically, in other words, guests are like God. We very much respect them and we act very well-mannered in front of them. The same thing goes back to when we were guests, they do the same for us. Whereas in Australia, I remember the first time I went to a non-Afghan house for a birthday party. And normally if someone was to come to my house, I would offer them, oh, do you want tea? No, I wouldn't even say, do you want tea? I would just assume that they want tea or, or drink or juice. And I would prepare all three and I would put, take it on a tray with dry fruit and cookies. And I will offer that to them, whether they eat it or not, it's there. Whereas when I went to that friend, I was so hungry and I was so thirsty and I was dying for her to ask me, are you hungry or are you thirsty? Or here is a tea that I made. And I wasn't used to that. And I was just like, oh, they're so rude. Like if they come to my house, I would treat them like a guest, like I would offer them everything. And I took that as a disrespect because I compared Afghan culture to the West. If they come to our house, we will give them the best food, the best beverages. And when we came to their house and I'm thirsty and they're not even offering me a drink. But then later I realized that they're not being disrespectful. They're not being rude. If you're hungry, if you're thirsty, the fridge is there, go help yourself out. If you do that in an Afghan house, I would be like, oh, he's so greedy. Like, but you could ask us. Maybe they don't feel comfortable asking us, or maybe they just don't like the, the things that we already provided for them. So those are the two differences that I noticed. And the other difference that I have noticed it a lot is time. The West is very precise with their timings. If they write an invitation saying the party starts at 6 p.m., no, that the party starts at 6 p.m. Let's say you're invited to an Afghan wedding and they put 7.30. That 7.30 means, I know it says to be there, to attend there, but it means you just start getting ready at home and get there by 9.30. We're not very precise with timings. <laughs> so basically the time lag would last longer than two hours? Yeah. The last wedding of a friend of mine, and she was Afghan, and in our table were her colleagues, and they were non-Afghans. But obviously we know the traditions, and like we know when the food will be served, we know when the uh, brides will come. And these non-Afghan couples, they were so hungry, and they were so eager for food to come, and they were like, oh, it's already 8.30, when are they going to serve food? And I'm like, oh, there is no food until 10 p.m. They were shocked. They're like, oh my God, that's so late for dinner. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But in Afghan culture, that's pretty early. <laughs> but imagine somebody invites me for a dinner at 7 p.m. and I show up right on time, then what would happen? There's a difference. If it's just you that's invited for a dinner at 7 p.m. exactly, I would recommend you to go there at 7 p.m. But if it's you and a few other friends or the few people from your family members are invited, then half an hour wouldn't make a huge difference. We know that the West are very good with the times. So we try to prepare when we're inviting a Western guest. But with Afghans, we know that if we invite them for 6 p.m., they're going to turn up at 8 p.m. If we're lucky. If not, then 9 o'clock. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing this culture insights. It was very interesting. We'll see you again in our future videos. No worries. Okay. Thank you, Mina.